All right. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Can you guys hear me okay? Everybody online, if you can't hear me, let me know in the chat box and we'll see what we can do, but we are gonna go ahead and get going. Um, welcome to New Family Orientation. To, uh, tonight, um, our six o'clock session is specifically gonna be focused on Mini 4-H. So if you're joining, um, Mini 4-H is our first and second graders. Excited to see a lot of you guys here in person as well as online. And I'm gonna make sure my clicker is gonna work for me. Maybe, maybe not. There we go. So tonight's plan, we're gonna do our pledges because that's the first thing we do at every mini 4-H meeting. Um, we are gonna go over um, some things about 4-H in general. We're gonna give you a brief history and then we're gonna do some breakout sessions. So mini 4-Hers, you're actually gonna get to go play a really fun game with some of our junior leaders to learn more about 4-H while I talk to your parents. I promise parents, you're not gonna to get to play a fun game, but you probably, you won't be super bored, I promise. Um, and then we are gonna talk about some upcoming events, deadlines and information and do some Q and A. So let's get going with our pledges. And I'm gonna actually have our junior leaders, junior leaders, could you guys come on up here? You're gonna help me with our pledges, please. Um, our junior leaders are seventh through 12th graders that have decided to take more of a leadership role within our 4-H program. And you will see these guys at a lot of your mini 4-H meetings because they help me do the activities. So we are going to do two pledges tonight. And at every 4-H meeting, we have our Pledge of Allegiance and then we have our 4-H pledge, okay? So I'm gonna ask you guys to stand and we also have it up on the screen in case you need the words. We're gonna do the Pledge of Allegiance and then we'll go over the 4-H pledge once before we do it all together. So I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, so stay standing. And now we're gonna go over our 4-H pledge. So 4-H has four H's. We have head, heart, hands, and health. So in our pledge, when we say the word head, you're gonna to point to your head, okay? When we say the word heart, you're gonna put your hand over your heart. When we say the word hands, you're gonna hold out your hands. And then when we say health, you're gonna kind of go all down your body because health is all aspects, right? Okay, so I'm gonna test you. And you guys online, if you wanna do this too, I'll be watching everybody. Okay, so where do you point when we say head? Where do you point, or what do you do when we say hands? Ooh, you guys are good. What about heart and health? Oh man, you guys are good. Okay, so we're gonna do this all together now. You can follow along. Junior leaders are here to also help out with those motions as well. So I pledge my head to clearer thinking, my heart to greater loyalty, my hands to larger service, and my health to better living for my club, my community, my country, and my world. Awesome, great job. You guys can grab a seat, go ahead and sit down. Good job online if you were participating as well. So a little bit about who I am. So you're like, who's this crazy person up there talking all about 4-H? My name is Katie Sweet. I'm the 4-H Youth Development Extension Educator here in Hendricks County. I have been here since uh, 2015, and I've been involved with Extension since 2013. Um, I graduated from North Carolina State University with my master's, the Wolfpack. And um, I went to Ball State University to get my undergrad degree in public relations and advertising. I am a complete 4-H nerd. I knew I wanted to be a 4-H educator from the time I was in eighth grade and attended a 4-H trip to Purdue University. Because how cool is this job? I get to work with awesome kids just like you guys. So I'm super excited to be here. Um, this was a fun promo we did a couple years ago with enrollment. Um, so that one I got to be uh, Mr. Miss Incredible, whichever one I was. Um, so I wanna know a little bit about who is here tonight. So how many mini 4-H members do we have? And those of you that are online, you guys can raise your hand, type in the chat box, um, do whatever you'd like. So how many mini 4-Hers do we have? Yeah, and how about uh, parents, guardians, helpers, aunts, uncles, anybody, adults? All right, how about volunteers? Guess what, if you raised your hand to that last question, you could raise your hand to this question. <laughs> so, um, just to give you a little bit about what 4-H is, we are the largest non-formal 
um, youth serving organization in the country. Um, we are volunteer led, so I wasn't really joking about that. You could be a volunteer if you wanted. We'll talk more about that later. Um, 4-H has a hands-on approach, um, and we are really focused on making sure our kids have the opportunity to experience things that they're interested in in a fun educational setting so that hopefully they can do a little bit of career exploration, even starting in first and second grade. So they might figure out what they want to do and maybe what they don't want to do when they're a little bit older without having to go to a four-year college, spend thousands and thousands of dollars just to decide that that's not what you really wanted to do. 4-H gives you that opportunity to try your hands at a lot of different things. And many 4-H is designed as a non-competitive program to just get the kids' feet wet into 4-H. So our mini 4-H program is for first and second graders. Some counties do allow kindergartners. Hendricks County is not one of those currently. Um, but our ultimate mission is to live out that um, we want to provide real life educational opportunities that develop young people who will have a positive impact in their communities and in their world. So we start that even at the first and second grade level um, with our meetings, with our projects, with the programs that we have for Mini 4-H. So some 4-H facts, we talked about this earlier, it's in our pledge, the 4-H's, head, heart, hands, and health. Um, everything we do relates to one of those, if not multiple of those aspects. We have our lovely emblem. You'll see this everywhere. It's plastered on our website. It's plastered on our newsletters that go out. It's on my polo. It's everywhere. Um, and this clover has uh, four H's on it. It is very specific because it can only be certain colors because it is protected under the same guidelines as the presidential seal and the Olympic rings. It's one of the only organizations, youth organizations in the world that has that same protection as well. So part of my job is I get to make sure that we are utilizing this clover properly and that it's being represented well within the community. Our motto is to make the best better and our colors are green and white. So you can see our lovely room here. Those of you joining online, you can see behind me, we've got green and white curtains even going. And we've got lots of different areas that we cover in 4-H, including STEM, healthy living, and citizenship, which we now call civic engagement. So a brief history, some fun facts about that. Um, it all started with corn and tomatoes. In 1902, um, the world was changing in agriculture and farmers were being a little stubborn and really didn't want to change. So we had some ad adults at the uh, universities realize that if they could teach kids and have contests for kids to grow corn, the kids were gonna be innovative, right? They were gonna figure out how they could grow the most corn to win that contest. Well, pretty soon the adults started to take note and 4-H grew and grew and grew because these kids were outgrowing their parents' corn yields. Um, same thing with tomatoes. Kids were able to plant, harvest, um, can and sell tomatoes. And they all had to do this with record keeping too. Sort of sounds like early 4-H, right? Um, so we started with corn and tomatoes and boy, have we come a long way. Look how much we've grown. This is one of our mini 4-H days from a couple of years ago, uh, this was our color run we did around the fairgrounds. Um, everybody got to have some color. We did some, um, we got really messy, had lots of fun, did some healthy living activities related to it. Um, but now in 4-H, we do still have our traditional agricultural roots, but we've ex expanded to include things like photography, arts and crafts, robotics, electricity, um, you name it, we have something for you in 4-H. So now we are going to take some time and we're gonna do our breakout session. So um, mini 4-Hers, if you would like, you don't have to, um, you are welcome to head back and hang out with our junior leaders and play some games. Parents, guardians, you're welcome to hang out here. If you really want to, you can go play the game, but I have some very important information I will be sharing. <laughs> Those of you online, sorry, you're kind of stuck with me right now, but I promise it will be a lot of fun. And while they're moving around, I'm gonna make sure, do we have questions? Uh, I see a John, do you have your hand raised? Do you have a question? Or are you just saying hi? We'll say you're just saying hi. Okay, if we have questions later, let me know. All right, parents, welcome. So I promise this is not the boring part, but I wanna give you um, some more details of what you guys can expect with Mini 4-H. Right now, our junior leaders, this is gonna be very similar to what they're gonna experience at a mini 4-H meeting. 
They're going to get to hang out with junior leaders, play a lot of educational games, um, do a lot of fun stuff. And the junior leaders are there to also promote junior leaders as a program and 4-H as a whole. Um, so just to give you a bigger understanding of where 4-H kind of comes from and how we are tied to Purdue University. So if you look us up on Facebook, you're not going to find Hendricks County 4-H. You're actually going to find Purdue Extension Hendricks County because we are tied to the land grant university, which in this case is Purdue. Um, and so we are funded through the state government. We are funded through USDA and NIFA at the national level. And then we also have funds that come from the county level. And so all of that goes to Purdue. And then Purdue then is able to provide resources, education, um, people, manpower to different areas of extension, including 4-H. And in our county, we have a 4-H educator, which is me. We have an ag and natural resources educator and community development person, um, which is Jeff Pell. And so he's the person, he's in charge of master gardeners. He's the one you call if you have plants that have bugs on them, um, your tomatoes aren't growing properly. He's the one that can help you out at that. Not me, definitely not me. Um, we have a health and human sciences educator, Beth Schweitzer, who also um, does a lot of healthy living activities. Um, and she is one that you would call if you had a canning question, Again, not me, um, but she is part of uh, Extension as well. And then we do have a fourth one. I didn't get a chance to uh, add up there. Um, a community wellness coordinator, Mindy Duckett, and her role is to go out into the community and make healthy habits um, and promote healthy habits within the community. So um, we also so take a little closer look at 4-H. 4-H is in all 92 counties in Indiana. Each county is gonna do things just a little bit differently. So out of curiosity, how many of you are 4-H alumni? Like you, you did 4-H when you were a kid. Okay, how many of you did it not in Hendricks County? All right, me too, um, I'm a transplant, it's okay. Um, uh, great to have you here. Um, so Hendricks County 4-H might look a little different than where you grew up. And if you go to another county, it's still gonna look a little different. Um, but in general, this is sort of the structure of 4-H. So I have an advisory board, um, an expansion review committee, their goal is to look at 4-H as a whole and say, okay, what are we missing? Um, where can we improve 4-H? What do we need to do to make things better? Um, and then I also work really closely with two boards in the county, one being the Youth Council, um, and they are the policy-making body. So our handbook, all of the, the rules that we have related to projects, they're the ones making sure that we're following not only local guidelines, but state guidelines and national guidelines related to 4-H as well. Um, and they play a big role uh, in our flower sales and a lot of other things we do as well. And then the fair board oversees the fair and these facilities. We are very lucky in Hendricks County to have awesome facilities. And we have a board that works hard to make sure that things are up to date, make sure our fair is gonna run as smooth as possible and that we have everything we need to make um, this fairground successful. And then you can see we have clubs, workshops, 4-Hers and volunteers that really make our program happen. We'll look at each of those a little bit differently or a little bit detailed um, here in a bit, but that's kind of the structure of 4-H in general. Many 4-Hers would obviously fall in our 4 h category. So some terminology just for you guys to know, um, you're gonna hear the word 4-H online a lot. So this is where everybody has signed up for 4-H. When you sign up for 4-H, you go to 4-H online. It is our enrollment database. It's where we pull emails, it's where how we communicate with our 4-H families. Fair entry is something that's a little bit different and that happens closer to fair. We will talk about that more here in a bit. Um, when I say project, that is a subject specific activity uh, completed through 4-H with an option to exhibit at the Hendricks County Fair. A lot of times when you think of projects, you'll think of some of the things that you'll see up here. So posters, You'll think of displays. Those of you online, you can see up there, I have a poster example. Um, and a project manual is something for many 4 Hers you guys can actually pick up tonight. These have activities in them as well as exhibit guidelines. So if I'm a first grader and I'm showing farm animals in here, it'll explain what you need to do um, to exhibit at the Hendricks County 4-H Fair. Okay? These are available online at all times and they're available hard copy in our office for free for many 4 Hers. Sorry, I need a drink of water. All right. So the question.
question tonight. I'm a mini 4-H parent or guardian or helper. Now what? So we're gonna go over six questions that our office gets asked and a couple of questions that we actually ask back to parents when we get asked those questions. First, where can I find answers to my questions? Um, there's lots of different places that you guys can go to look. Obviously you can call our office and we are happy to help, um, but some resources that you have available to you include the mini 4-H handbook. handbook. Again, available tonight. This has an overview of the mini 4-H program. It's got projects listed in there. That is something that is available again online as well as hard copy. You can check out our newsletter um, and mini 4-H also has been, should have been getting a newsletter the past couple months. Um, we send those out typically in the winter months because we don't meet. So they're more fun, again, educational, what's coming up. Um, if you haven't gotten that, it's probably because you were not enrolled uh, by the time that we had sent it. That's okay. Um, those are also available online. And Mini 4-H meetings is a great chance to ask questions, um, get information. All of our Mini 4-H project manuals also have information in them. Um, the County Extension Office, our new family guide, which is available tonight, and then our website as well. So our brand new beautiful website that we have available. Number five is, uh, I mentioned 4-H online and fair entry earlier. So we always get the question, do I have to do both of them? And what's the difference? So 4-H online, that's our enrollment database. That's where you're gonna say, I'm in mini 4-H. I'm taking these two projects. I'm gonna be in the mini 4-H club because then mini 4-H is really only the mini 4-H club for our, our kiddos. Um, and that's where you can register for events. Eventually when the kids are older, you can do scholarships through 4-H online. Um, so that's kind of our hub for data collection, okay? That happens starting October 1st, um, and it goes really all the way up until May. We try and encourage a January 15th deadline, um, just because that's when we stop using our old email database for 4-H online and start using the new year. So if you enrolled, January uh, 16th, that is okay. We're not gonna kick you out of 4-H and there is still time to enroll, um, but it's all gonna be done on 4-H online. Fair Entry is a secondary website that is connected to 4-H online. This is fair specific. So this is where on 4-H online, you've enrolled your mini 4-H'er. As we get closer to fair, fair entry is gonna open up and you're gonna say, I'm taking mini 4-H um, farm animals and I'm gonna do, I know it's not a livestock, and I'm gonna do a poster. And it's gonna print out um, a little tag that's gonna go on the bottom corner here for fair. So it's gonna print out the exhibit tag. So fair entry is the specific, this is what I'm bringing to fair. 4-H online is the general, I have signed up for 4-H. This is my contact information. Make sense? We uh, will definitely send, as we get closer to FAIR, step-by-step -step guides. Everything you need to know about FAIR entry, we will send as we get closer to FAIR. You don't even have to worry about it right now, but I, want, I always wanna bring it up now because we always get the question of why are there two different things here? Um, and this also, again, when they get older, it connects to state FAIR for some of the indoor projects. So that's what we have to use to say what projects are going to the state FAIR as well. And it's also what we use in our livestock to do our show programs. <clears throat> what should I expect at a Mini 4-H club meeting is number four. Um, like I mentioned, this is very similar to what will happen at Mini 4-H. We'll do our pledges. We'll do a mixer, have some sort of introduction activity. Um, right now, our meetings are going to be hybrid. Um, and we will be offering the, the chance that we are going to do an activity in person. The kids can say, hey, I wanna do virtual and we'll send them supplies that they might need to participate at home. A lot of it will be stuff that they could print off um, at home or if we need something very specific for an activity, we'll make sure they get that. Because we wanna make sure our 4-Hers are participating in whatever avenue they feel comfortable with. Um, and then we'll do breakout sessions. So on the even years, which is this year, we're gonna focus on 4-H projects. So we're actually gonna do some of the activities that are in their books. 
Um, on odd years, we focus on the 4-H missions. So we'll have things that are more focused on STEM, healthy living. Um, they might not necessarily be straight out of the, uh, a project book, but they're gonna tie closely to one of the many 4-H projects. And they're gonna rotate around. So we'll have different um, activities for them to do. We try and break them up into groups so they can meet new people. Um, but we always want our mini 4-Hers to be comfortable. So if they have a sibling or if they have a best friend that they really wanna be with that night, that's not a problem. We'll make sure that they're put in the same group. And then we have a snack usually, um, announcements at the end and, question, and time for question and answer. Um, we also, I also wanna note that meetings are not required. So no meetings for mini 4-H are required. Um, come to what you can. Uh, enjoy what you are able to participate in. This is very much an organization where you're gonna get out what you put in. So if you can't make it to a meeting, it's not the end of the world. And our junior leaders definitely help us. So tonight they're helping us. They'll be helping us at all of our meetings for Mini 4-H as well. Number three is how does my child pick projects? We always ask the question back, what does your child like? Do they like Legos? Do they like drawing? Do they like taking pictures? Do they like animals? What do they like? Because that's gonna help us figure out what projects they can take and what other programs that they might be interested in within 4-H. So check out the mini 4-H handbook. It has a list of all the projects and what the displays would be, exhibits would be, activities, everything's kind of in that handbook for them to look over. Um, find a project that relates to your child's interests. And it's a good idea to start with one or two projects. And in, in mini 4-H, you can only take one or two projects. Just because we really don't want kids to get overwhelmed, come in, do all 20 projects, and then feel really discouraged when they only finish one. Um, so this is just their chance to kind of see what's out there, see what they like. You can take as many books as you guys want. So again, it's all online as well. Your 4 h -er can do as many projects as they want and explore as much as they want. When it comes time to fair though, they can only bring two, one or two. Um, mini 4 h has projects. Um, ask friends who are involved in different projects. What do you like? What do your kids do? Maybe my kid would like that. Uh, I mentioned mini 4 h kids can exhibit up to two projects. That's also a logistical thing too. We have a lot of space, but if every mini 4 h -er brought five projects, we'd be in trouble. So one or two. Um, and then once decided, make sure it's in 4-H online by May 15th. So I mentioned before that as adults, you could also become volunteers, which are very important to our organization. Um, all of our volunteers that work with your kids go through a screening process. Um, we know that your kids are your most prized possession. So we wanna make sure that they are safe. So there's this, an application and a screening process. We do a background check. Um, we do an adult behavioral expectation list that we go over with all of our volunteers. Um, they have to also have a 4-H online profile and go through a youth safety and diversity and equity and inclusion training as well. Um, on top of that, they get to meet with me and um, they get to be placed within our program. So if you are interested, I know that sounds like a lot, but again, we work with kids. So we want to make sure that they're going to be kept safe and that it's going to be a good connection for not only the adult to be involved, but for the program um, to find what's gonna be the best place for you to be a volunteer within our program. Um, we do have applications available tonight if you're interested. Um, we also have them online for those that are joining virtually. They are available on our website to get that started. There's lots of different ways to get involved, especially after 4-H or after Mini 4-H. Um, I will say I always love extra hands at Mini 4-H meetings. Um, parents at the Mini 4-H meetings, you are welcome to stay. Again, it's going to be very similar to this. We'll do activities. You can hang out, bring a book if you'd like, you know, hang out, get some work done. Um, that is up to you, which, or you can go watch your kid play. Totally up to you. Um, but it's always great to have extra hands. Um, if you are looking to take that next step and be a volunteer, um, let me know and I'd be happy to talk with you. In regular 4-H, we have lots of opportunities from club leaders, assistant club leaders, um, spark programs are our shorter experiences for kids, um, chaperones for trips, getting on boards, committees, and then fair volunteers as well. So lots of different ways to get involved as a volunteer. And I'm going to um, give my warning to the junior leaders. Junior leaders, this is the last slide. Uh, um, 
The last one is what are the important dates from each quarter? And we have several important dates. I mentioned January 15th is a big date. That's kind of our target deadline for enrollment. Um, it's really soft, but that's just when we stop using last year's 4-H online emails and start using this year's. Um, February 15th, March 9th, April 11th, and May 17th are gonna be the next mini 4-H meetings. Each of those meetings are gonna have um, some sort of project related activity to them. You guys will get a lot more information um, in the mail and in emails coming up. I will say that I am coming off of a four month maternity leave. So um, very exciting, awesome. I, I do, I will say I have a cute little girl now um, and my little boy loves being a big brother, but that makes it a little difficult for me balancing now everything. So I'm playing a little bit of catch up, but our mini 4-Hers should be getting a list of what we're gonna be doing at each of those meetings within the next couple of weeks. Um, so you can kind of see what to expect, see what projects we're going to talk about, see what meetings you really, really want to be at, and if there's any meetings where you're like, ah, eh, maybe we can skip this one. Um, again, no meetings are mandatory, but we want you to have these dates on your calendar as well. And then June 3rd um, is a mini 4-H day camp. It's typically in the morning here at the fairgrounds, um, and it's more of a, like, usually 9 to noon. We do a tour of the fairgrounds. The kids get to do some more fun activities. Um, we will be finalizing all of that again, hopefully in the next couple months. Um, there is usually a small fee for this one just to help cover supplies because it is longer. Um, and we usually have snacks and we try and get something usually um, extra fun for the kids to do. So there's usually a fee, five, $10. Um, and then most of our mini 4-H meetings are gonna start at 6.30 unless they're otherwise stated. And they're going to be a hybrid, so virtual and in-person. Um, some other important dates. May 15th is our drop ad deadline. That's when we really would like to have all of the projects declared in 4-H online. So fair entry can be ready to open on January or on June 1st. Sorry. Um, June 1st is when fair entry will open. That's our target deadline of having that open, which means that's when you can start telling us what you're going to bring to the fair. Um, July 10th through the 16th is pre-fair week. Um, and so many 4 hers are gonna have a specific time. I think we're still finalizing what the schedule is gonna look like. Um, as soon as that date is set, I will let you guys know. Um, but there's gonna be a specific time and date where many 4 hers will bring in their projects to fair. Um, and then the fair is actually the 17th through the 23rd. I will say, I, I didn't put this up there, but our theme is big wheels, pig squeals and family meals. That's our fair theme this year. Um, so we're very excited to do some fun activities related to those things, whatever they may be. Um, mini 4-Hers are also gonna be invited. We've had for the past couple of years, a mini 4-H day at the fair. Um, in the past, we've been able to participate in the parade. We're not sure if we're gonna have a parade this year, um, but we usually do something special for the mini 4-Hers one day of the fair. Um, in the past couple of years, it's been a Sunday. Still trying to figure out that scheduling this year, or whether it's going to be that Sunday or a different day. Um, and then July 24th is the Sunday after fair. And that afternoon is the achievement program. We would love for our mini 4 hers to come celebrate with us. Usually involves a meal. We recognize our 10-year members. Um, but we have started to recognize our mini 4 h members that are there too. At least give them a chance to stand up, wave, say hello, because there's a lot of mini 4 hers um, but we want them to show, to be able to see what they can also do if they're involved in the 4-H program. So before our kids get ready to, to head back over here, are there questions you guys have um, before we go over everything um, last minute I have? Junior leaders, you guys can head this way. <clears throat> questions? Questions? I do have a couple more things once they get here. All right, and as they're regrouping, um, anybody online, if you have questions, if you wanna type those in the chat box, let me know. We'll make sure to answer those. All right, mini 4 
teachers, did you have fun? Yeah. yeah, did you learn a little bit about what projects you might like? Maybe, yeah? At least you moved around a little bit, right? Awesome. Well, I know the junior leaders are excited to get to know you guys over the coming months, and hopefully you guys will uh, be coming to a couple of our mini 4-H meetings, and those are some types of activities that we would be doing at our meetings, too. So, what's next is the next question. Next is it's time for you guys to pick out your projects. What are things you like to do? Pick up some project books, look at them, um, start working on them. It's never too early. I'll say that knowing that most people will wait until the last minute because I too was a 4 h -er that waited until the last minute. Uh, uh, we got livestock, that's not many. Um, get involved, so come to meetings when you can, read the newsletter for upcoming information, um, and then stay tuned for specific fair information coming in the next few months. Flower sales are gonna be coming up. Many 4 h -ers, you will see this. This is our biggest fundraiser as a county 4-H program that we do. Many 4-Hers are invited to participate, but they don't have to. Nobody actually has to. Um, it's encouraged for the older kids to participate because it helps their clubs get a portion of the funds. Um, many 4-Hers, you are more than welcome to sell flowers, but again, you don't have to. We sell poinsettias, or poinsettias, we sell petunias and geraniums. Um, it's a great money maker. We would get a portion of the funds that you sell. And then if you sell for every $100 you would sell, you actually get five cafe bucks, which you can spend at the 4-H cafe during fair. Again, mini 4-H, we're just getting you guys interested in 4-H. You're welcome to do this. You don't have to. If you do decide to do it, it needs to be turned into the extension office by March 21st. So you guys will get information about it. Like I said, and the funds, the other funds that uh, this goes to is our youth council, and it helps send kids on trips. It helps pay for programs and awards and scholarships, um, all types of things that, that 4 Hers can participate in as well. Uh, tonight, you guys can grab a new family guide if you have not already. It does show um, a lot of information about our 4 H program. Again, it's also available online for those of you joining virtually. Um, there are other handouts. Uh, we've got our mini 4-H flyer, again, available on our website too. And uh, I think uh, the volunteer application is over there as well. My contact information is up on the screen. If anybody would like to take a picture, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, excuse me, Twitter or YouTube as well. Um, that is our lovely website. It's really, really, really long. Um, honestly, the best thing to do is if you Google Purdue Extension Hendricks County or Hendricks County 4-H, it'll pop up. Um, so I would like to now open it up for questions. Ooh, I'm ahead of schedule. Um, <laughs> I'd like to open it up for questions. And if possible, for those of you joining tonight, if you wouldn't mind taking a couple minutes to fill out this comment card. And those of you that are virtual, I'm going to put the uh, link in the chat box for a survey as well. But I will answer any questions you guys have now. Um, online, feel free to unmute or type it in the chat box as well. I did that awesome that there are no questions. That is fantastic. I will put that in my report. Well, I will let you guys go then. Um, thank you those of you joining online. I'll stick around if you have any questions that you wanna follow up with. I will pause the recording. Um, those of you that are here, if you wanna come up because you just didn't wanna raise your hand, I understand that as well. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you guys so much for coming tonight. If you would fill out your card and you can drop it on the table on your way out. Everybody have a safe trip home and thank you again. We'll see you at our next meeting.